This is a quick tutorial on how to install archetypes, or in other words, new UMA zombies to your game. Um, I'm going to be installing one of my archetypes, uh, the more complicated one, just so you can have an idea of what's necessary. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the forums. Look at me, I'm always on the forums. Hmm. All right, get that later. Um, so first thing you want to go to do is game mods. And then archetypes, which is guppy types. Go to page one. Choose the zombie you want to install. Um, I have one that is more complicated than the other, and that is this one right here. So I'm going to install him. So first thing I'm going to do after that is go to my config folder, seven days data config, and I'm going to edit some files. I want to edit archetypes. I want to edit entity classes. I also want to edit entity groups and game stages. And for this particular zombie, I also want to edit items. So I'm going to go ahead and edit those. So I have archetypes, entity classes, entity groups, spawning, and items. Okay, so I'm going to start with archetypes. So I'm going to click on the bouncer, and it's going to bring me to a page that has its archetype code. I'm going to see that it starts with the archetype name and ends with a slash arch archetype. So it's set up just like an HTML page. Um, if anybody's familiar with HTML design, you have a starting tag and then you have an ending tag. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to basically highlight the entire thing making sure that it is all highlighted 100 percent. I'm going to right click, copy, go into archetypes, go all the way down to the bottom, and there's already some zombies in here. Um, the very last zombie archetype is Mad Mole. They, somebody did a UMA zombie of Mad Mole and it is available in the vanilla um, game. I don't know if anything calls it or if you'll see him around, but it actually does look quite a bit like him. So anyway, I'm going to go down and I'm going to make some space at the very bottom because this is one entry. Mad Mole starts with an archetype and ends with an ending tag for archetype. Slash archetype, that means it's an ending tag. I don't want to be in there, so I want to make my own. So I'm going to make some space. I'm going to go to the beginning of the line and then I'm going to right click, paste. Because remember, I already copied it from here. So now I'm pasting it in here. So now I have my own block. Archetype name got bouncer in tag. So that is properly installed in the archetype. But let's say I want to keep track of where they're at. So I'm going to add a comment. And in the comment, you do the less than sign, exclamation point, dash, dash. See how everything turns green? Um, let's see, I'm going to call these guppies archetypes. And then I'm going to end the comment with a dash dash and then a greater than sign. And see how I accidentally put a question mark? That's bad, so I want to erase that. So when I'm looking at it in Notepad++, which if you're not using this editor, you really should, I can see my comments are green, but my code is sound. So archetypes is now done. It now has gut bouncer in it. File, save. So the next thing I'm going to go to is entity classes. Actually, you know what? I didn't want to do gut bouncer, I wanted to do gut biff. So I'm going to go back to gut biff, because he's the one with the extra hand. And I'll copy his archetype code, go to my entity classes, and I'm going to delete gut bouncer. Making sure I only delete the lines I added. So I still have my ending tag, and I still have my comment. So that's deleted, right? So now I'm going to right click, paste what I copied from over here. And you see it screwed something up. There's got biff, but I've got entity classes. And the reason for that is when you look at what I've captured, I accidentally captured this line. So I want to go ahead and delete that line as well. And you can see how much it pops in uh, Notepad++, which is another great reason to use it. So in, in case you guys wonder, I actually make these mistakes on purpose. Um, these are common mistakes people make, and I want to be able to demonstrate how to easily fix them and how to easily see them. Um, some mistakes I don't plan, but this one I did, and I take every opportunity I can to point out my own mistakes, so that way you can better notice your own your mistakes if you make them. So anyway, back to what I have. I have archetype gut biff, ends an archetype tag, 
file, save. Everything's fine, right? So now the next one is an entity classes. This is a much larger entity classes than the other one. I'm going to right click, copy, and I'm making sure everything's highlighted that only one hi that I want highlighted. So I go to entity classes, same thing. I'm going to go to the very bottom because it's just easier that way. Make some space and add my own entity class. Now you see that the last entity class in the vanilla folder is trader test, but mine is entity class got biff with entity classes. File, save. That's it. That's all you have to do for adding archetypes. Except for in this particular archetype, he also ha he also has a special hand because he does uh, an ext extraordinary amount of damage to blocks. So I created an items XML code from here. The other ones do not have that because they do not have special hands. Doesn't she look so sad? Anyway, so I'm going to copy items XML, copy, go into Notepad plus plus, go to items XML. Now this one's a little bit different. Item ID equals one, item ID equals six, item ID equals seven. And it's important to note there is a finite amount of items you can add in seven days to die. It is more important to note that you must not have the same item number if you that that's that already exists in the file. So because I chose items two four five two, if you're running any other mods, there's a solid chance somebody already chose that one. So I'm basically going to control F this file two four five two, and cannot find two four five two. So that tells me that in this file there is no other two four five two, and that's important because if I use a modded one, somebody might have already used it on my ID, and you just simply need to change it in both both areas. So anyway, same thing. I'm going to go to the bottom of the file. Now they have a lot more commented out here, so I'm actually going to go ahead and do it right after, right before their comments. Control, control V is the same thing as right click and paste. Um, so now I have item 1464, item 1465, item 2452. Now I could have chosen item 1466, and as long as it's the same in my um, in my entity uh, entity classes, um, you know, hand gup actually doesn't matter. So hand gup Hulk, I guess in entity classes it's looking for the item, and in items it's, it, it's just only looking for the number. So we'll worry about that later. But it says hand gup, gu hand gup Hulk here. It says hand gup Hulk here. So we're good. Well, where the hell I was at? So anyway, now file, save. And that is how you add the item. So now I have the zombie in the game. This zombie is in the game. It is completely spawnable. The problem is, is it's not going to spawn because I haven't told it to spawn. I added some instructions here that talk a little bit about entity groups and spawning. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what those look like. When you look at entity groups at XML, it basically has a bunch of groups of all the different zombies. Here's one called Zombies All, and it contains Bo, Joe, Steve, Mo, Yo, Arlene, Darlene, Marlene, Nurse, and Steve Crawler. Now, you can manually add them in here as well. I want to add an entity group gut biff, right? So I'm going to basically follow the same code. I'm going to put it between this one and this one and type in entity name equals gut biff. Right? And you think, oh, this looks great. Everything's going to work. So I'm going to file save it. This will not work. And the reason why, because this file happens to be case sensitive. So when the game tries to call zombies all, <coughs> and it does not find a gut biff, with this with this lowercase g and this lowercase b and all whatever it's going to crash on you so i'm going to go back into my file um or entity classes in this case and oh look the b is capitalized so i'm basically going to copy and i'm going to paste it into entity groups that way i don't have any chance of typos now it will call because it's actually going to look for lowercase g u b p uppercase B, lowercase IFF. And if it doesn't find it, it's not going to spawn. Now, this is a quick and dirty, cheap and easy way to make sure Guff Biff spawns in your game. Now, Guff Biff is pretty powerful, so I'm going to actually add a probability to him to make sure he doesn't spawn quite as often as the other fellas. So I'm going to look at the code down here, and look, this Hornet only spawns 0.05% of the, or 5% of the time. So I'm going to make it less than that. So I'm going to add a probability equals, quote, 0.01%. This means as the spawner goes down the list, 
when it gets to this line, it's only going to give a 1% chance to spawn him. That seems low, but you will see him. But at the same time, you really don't want to see him in Zombies All because he really is pretty strong. But I'm going to leave him there because it's simple. Now, this should theoretically make sure he spawns in your game. But again, if you're running mods, you're going to run in situations where people have already modded entity groups and already modded something called spawning that XML. Spawning that XML is where, how you determine which groups get spawned in which biomes and other circumstances. So in this case, we're worried about zombies all. So I'm going to go to spawning. Now this says that in the biome city, and the note says Dyersville, Dyersville zombie all, zombies all is going to spawn. That means if you start a Navis game game, and you go into Dyersville, zombies all is going to get called, which, which includes these zombies. Then the game is going to say, okay, there's a gut biff being called. It's going to check entity classes to see what gut biff all is, is all about. Oh, his walk type is 2. That means he's a shambler. Max health is 1,600. It means he's got a lot of hit points. Um, his AI task is to break blocks. He's territorial. He really doesn't do much with players. He does not attack players very often unless it, uh, because he, his, he's designed to attack blocks. Other ones are, are designed to attack enemies and players and survivors. This guy's a little special. Anyway, and then it says to get his physical characteristics from, from gut biff and archetypes. So I've got archetypes and there it is. So all of these things tie in together. Spawning checks with entity groups, entity groups checks with classes, classes checks with archetypes. And that's it. That's how you easily add zombies to the game. Now you can get fancier. You can go to spawning and you can put them in different groups. Let's say I only want him to show up in this burnt forest. So I'm going to uh, see the entity group that's called with Burnt Forest is Zombies Burnt Forest. I'm going to Entity Groups. I'm going to remove the line from here. And it doesn't actually matter for spaces. I just like to be clean. I'm going to find Zombies Burnt Forest. And you know what? I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to look for the word burnt. Zombies Burnt Forest, there it is. Now I'm going to add the line here. So right now, the only two zombies you should ever see in Zombies Burnt Forest are Burnt Zombies and Zombie Steve Crawler. That's the little crawling dude, and of course the Burnt Zombie. But I'm now going to add Gut Biff to it. So now when you go to Burnt Forest, you'll have a chance of seeing Gut Biff. And the Snow Zombies, all you'll ever see are Snow Zombies. That's why they're so boring to go in the snow. We used to have like five, four or five different zombies in the snow. Now we have one. Zombie Boss only has the cop. Zombie Ferals only has the feral. You know, this, you can kind of play around and put and move zombies around. You can make it so that you, in any time it spawns an animal, it, it spawns a zombie. You can make it all sorts of different cool things. And I'm not going to go too much into how to use this, but I just wanted to give a simple explanation of how to install my mod. Um, and archetypes, entity classes, entity groups, spawning, and items. That's what you need for Gut Biff. None of my other archetypes so far need items that XML. So when you're looking at this list, so far Biff is the only one because he has a very strong hand that attacks blocks. This zombie, this zombie, this zombie, and this zombie do not need the items. It only needs the um, entity classes and archetypes. So it's up uh, zombie, got zombie crawler, got Martha, got Biff, and I swear he looks like a real Biff. Got Sally. And on page two, maybe page three, I don't really know, gut bouncer. And that's it.